Hello Hi guys. guys! Hello, hello, hello! So today we're bringing you five tips on how to get a first class or 3.7 3. 3. to, to 4.0 GPA. GPA? In American equivalent. American equivalent. So sit back, get a pen and paper and we'll see you in a minute. Miss Tunde. Kongo. And we, we studied computing and information systems. Um, in which we both actually um, graduate with a first class honours degree um, and we thought actually we could actually share some tips that we had uh, whilst we were at university so, so yeah, as, as Tinder said um, one thing that I just wanted to discuss before we started is like I think I remember before I went to university and stuff and then I, like, I was looking at my um, GCSE results and like my college results and I thought oh you know some things it's just what your brain can do and if you're not born intelligent then Put, uh, maybe you can only get a certain grade but I think sometimes it is also about hard work it's not you don't have to be born like or yeah some people are naturally like intelligent yes we'll admit that but also I think hard work and having the right sort of techniques and stuff I think helps to actually make sure you attain that first class so I don't think so just to put it out there so you don't feel like a downer thinking oh no my GCSE results for this or my A level results for this and at the end of the day, you've got into uni, so you can definitely do it. So yeah. just put the work in. Yeah. Tip number five. Find what works for you. So um, for me personally, I'm quite, I'm like a night owl, so like I work better at night. So I figured that out and I thought, okay, study at night. So obviously, turn up your lectures and then just study at night. So, you know, if you find it better to study in the morning, do it in the morning, just find what works for you. Because I think if you find, Finding what works for you makes you get the most out of yourself. Yeah. So basically, so I studied at night a lot of the times, and um, I'll drink so much coffee just to keep myself awake, as well. So just do whatever it is that works, I suppose, in that sense. But in terms of finding what works for you, like you might enjoy going out because obviously part of uni people go out a lot and whatnot. So it's just making sure that even if you're going out, you've got a really social, a really active social life, and you you part of so many societies, maybe you're president or whatever in different societies. Yeah. It's just making sure that despite all of that um, commitment, all of these social activities, you, you remember what it is that you came to uni for. And in that way you can find like you know find what works when you get some people as well. I remember like a few people at uni you'd think they never study and then you, but then not knowing that by one PM they've already read like for seven hours straight in the morning because they didn't have any lectures or whatever. Then you had turning up at one PM thinking, Oh no, it's fine, it's fine, but no, you've gotta like figure it out and don't compare like okay. how other people study, I think, really. Yeah. So tip number four is um referencing. So I think especially for like dissertation projects and stuff like in your, in your final year or whatever year you are referencing, I think a really helpful tip is um, as you go along, so every book, so that's journal and everything that you come across, it's just write it down, make a note of it, you know, type it up on your laptop on a Word document or something, just make a note of every single um, book and journal or whatever piece yeah. of source that don't you Don't leave it to last minute. Yeah, don't leave it to last no, minute. Try not to leave it to last minute. Yeah, we had the Harvard referencing that we had to do. So you don't, I didn't personally put it into the Harvard referencing as soon as possible. All I did was make a long list of every single book and journal. Even if I only took like one line from it, every single thing that, that I came across, I made a full list of it. So, you know, write down the book or the journal and the author and um, also why you got it so that you can come back to it later and then set some time aside. You could, if you prefer to do it as you go along, great, but then just make sure you've got the list and then you can come back. So I remember I spent like two, three days for my dissertation just going back on what I wrote down and just trying to now properly put it into the Harvard referencing. Whereas if I didn't write it down, oh, that would have been a nightmare trying to remember everything that I came across. So it's just, it's just kind of helpful. Yeah. <laughs> that was the part I hated the most, referencing. Oh, yeah. oh. It's just not fun at all. So if you can save yourself time in the end by actually, you know, writing them down, put it somewhere that mm -hmm. you know you're going to reuse it later on, or just put it as long lo along with what you're writing anyway. So it really helps that way. Yep, definitely. So yeah, and then tip number, number three: your lectures. Now this. Pressure le your lectures. Now, this might sound a bit wrong, you know, pressuring them as a little kid, but you have to realise that they're actually your resources. So just like at the library, the library is your resource, the mm -hmm. books there, so are your lecturers. At the end of the day, you're paying for them to be there to lecture you. So you need your time and you need to maximise any time they give you as many mm -hmm. as possible. So what we tried to do while we were at uni was we wrote a set number of questions mm -hmm. before we actually saw our lecturers. Um, so that we can actually maximize our time and they know 
when a, a student is serious by not by the sort of questions you ask as well so they will want to give you that time and that support that you would require really that will help you neither your essay or project or exam upcoming exam so try not to be intimidated by you know speaking to your lectures as much as you can because it really does go a long way and we've actually got a funny story where we Kongi and I sat in front of our lecturer's office, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, he, I think he had a meeting um, and he saw us, uh, you can tell the story actually, I think she says it better girl. Yeah, so basically, we needed, there's this bit that we just didn't understand, we spoke through it, we, we both talked about it, we just didn't get it. So we're like, okay, let's go see our lecturer. So basically, he was like, oh, I'm busy and stuff, and our exam was literally in two days from that day. And I was thinking, I don't want to go into exam without knowing this part, because what if there's a huge question on this particular stuff? So we literally sat outside his office for like, like all morning. He, he came out, he saw us, and he was like, oh, guys, I'm busy, I've got meetings all day and stuff. Oh, yeah. And then we're like, how about tomorrow? And he was like, oh, I'm really busy tomorrow. And we're like, no, we need to see you even if it's just like 15 minutes we need to see you it was like oh no i'm really super busy but as it was just like you know what we're gonna sit outside it so like just across from his lecture so he had to walk out the corridor to come into this like sort of um landing so we just sat there where there were two tables and literally like as he went in and out of all of his meetings he saw us there <laughs> yeah. so he was thinking okay i can't just the ignore speed, them yeah. all day yeah. so we literally just sat there and we're like we need to see you and so yeah so basically eventually was like okay guys come in i've got a meeting soon i need to prepare for it but I've already sort of prepared for it so you guys can come in quickly and we're waiting and literally I think the thing that we actually asked him for came up in the exam yeah, so we're like oh wow so yeah just like you know don't give up it's kind of that whole persistence thing you know you know what you want so just don't give up so those lectures they're there for you like yeah. what you know you need to go for them yeah, <laughs> and just, hand them down and, uh, <laughs> just, just ask them questions you know get as much support as you can yeah, they're, they're there for you so they, they're resources that are meant to be used really not just in lectures but outside lectures as well so try and spend a lot of time with them if you can mm -hmm. tip number two. two number two past papers now this past papers is probably arguably one of the most important things in in uni or if you want to pass anything really i mean Past papers give you an indication of what is to come as well, and you can, if you can look at the trend. So we used to um, go way back in the past papers. I think five, six years, and we basically answer every single question in exams, in exam past papers, and we could get in, you know, some sort of trend of the sort of questions that come along and the way they've been asked as well. So that's preparing us to know what to actually focus on in our revision as well. That's also maximizing our time um, in what we're actually focusing our revision on mm -hmm. um, so that way we're working smart rather than just working hard all the time and trying to cover the whole syllabus we know which parts are the most important ones mm -hmm. and then when we've covered them and we've understood them we then cover the rest as well just as an addition just in case those questions do creep up but yeah. looking at past papers is vital guys it's mm -hmm. really really important to know yeah. what has been asked in the past and what the likelihood of questions coming up is uh, and speaking to the lecturer as well. So with the scenario we gave earlier on by us sitting outside the lecturer's office We we actually had past papers in our hands So we've already answered some of them and we were actually confused with some of the questions and some of the answers So we weren't sure so thankfully we were able to actually get an answer and understand it a lot more Because um, two days later that question crept up again So if you had ignored it or if you didn't even go through the past paper Will have had no clue what to expect yeah that's it i think because you think about it like a textbook is like this thick and sometimes it's even that thick you know you get like really huge textbooks so it's kind of like in the, in the entire all these reading um because you normally get reading lists for each module so it, out of all this reading list and out of all your lecture notes and lecture slides there's so much content and for you to actually know what you, you need for your exam it's worth going for the exam papers because out of all of that you read because sometimes you could read a whole page but then you know that whole page, yeah. but the way they'll ask that question, you won't even know that they're referring to that page. Yeah. But if you go through past papers and stuff, you'll be like, oh yeah, yeah, this is how it links. This is how they'll ask the question sort of thing. So yeah, I think um, that's like my, the biggest tip out of all yeah. of this, if you get anything, past papers. I know some people say, oh, past papers are not available, this, this, this. But if you go to your library, most university libraries should have like an archive of all oh, the past yeah. papers. So search in your library, pe like you know, going back, ask your lecturer, lecturer, yeah, ask your well. lecturer, yeah. see if they can help you and stuff. But usually they provide them. If they don't, ask them and mm -hmm. stuff. And if you can, even if you can just do the one pass paper, it's better than nothing. But if obviously the more the merrier. So if you can get hold of more, like just try your best too, because literally, like 
I think they're so amazing. Like something that I didn't do in like high school and college, and I noticed like the the difference each time I did do it, like my results and stuff. Because then I'm knowing what sort of things I'm expected to know and yeah. what's gonna come up. So it's kind of like not neglecting them, even if it means like if you've already got your exam coming up now and you've maybe not looked at past papers, just sort of consider going back at them and going through each question and trying to see, making sure you understand it really. So yeah, and also speaking of past papers, so another um, useful resource is. Um, the marking guidelines, so when you have like an essay, which oh, yeah. is not an exam, so you can't have like past papers for it, you know, your lecturers, usually I think they should provide you with a marking um, guideline, so it's just sort of, you know what they're marking it against, you know what they're giving points to, what's, what are they allocating each percentage of your mark to. So if you could just sort of try go through that, understand that as best as you can, and make sure you cover it. So sometimes it will tell you, like in a dissertation, it says to you, you know, referencing is 25% or something like that of the mark. So you know you need to make sure you, you focus on that or whatever it is. But just look at the mark, the mark scheme and try um, and yeah. fit your essay a lot, alongside that mark scheme. And you know, almost like you're ticking it off, like, yes, I'm going to get that mark. I'm going to get that mark kind of thing. Because yeah. you know what they're looking for. Yeah. yeah. So that leaves us to tip number one. The last one, well, what we consider to be number one yeah. in this tips, and that is set your goal at university to be, to graduate with a first class, mm -hmm. basically. Um, you can, I think one can only achieve what they set as a goal. Mm -hmm. So it's important to set your goals and your standards really high so that the worst case scenario, you just get the second part, which mm -hmm. in, in the United Kingdom is actually 2-1. Yeah. So if you set your goal as a first class, and then the worst is, the worst case scenario is probably you getting a 2-1, chances are. So mm -hmm. um, you can't really go wrong by setting yourself a first class because that way yeah. you're setting yourself up for, for a really high score really. Yeah. And going back to the market scheme as well, you can see what, what grade, um, I mean, what sort of answers or what sort of things you need to provide to get a first class. So try and look at that and then you just basically try to provide what it is that mm. actually that's what you need to get a first class. Because you can see, okay, first class, 2-1, two, 2-2. Two, two. And then they, they require different things basically. So try to to answer everything or try to provide everything that, you, that is required of a first class uh, mark basically. If you miss out a few things, then at least you know that the worst case scenario is you get 2-1 whereas if you set your target to be 2-1 or to get 2-1 chances are you could miss out on a 2-1 by 2 percentages or 2% sorry um, and get a 2-2 two, two. Mm. so but if you miss out on a 2% from a first class you get a 2-1 which yeah. is still good guy so yeah um, I think the quote goes something like um, set your goals high because even if you fall you've at least fall there somewhere something yeah, like that higher than you would have yeah higher than it set. and also in terms <laughs> of setting goals as well like usually um, in uni you notice like first class from is sort of like between 70% and obviously up to 100% so I mean I know it, it's it can sound a bit like oh but if you can set yourself to say okay for every essay for every exam when I get between 80 and 100 then at least you know if you if it, it, you know, if you don't, then you end up in the 70s, and even yeah. then you're still in the first, first yeah. or you know your high two ones, and then eventually maybe some modules will balance out because it's not obviously it's it's kind of like that thing. Some modules are harder than the others, so some of them you might get like a two one, some of them you might get really high first, but then yeah. it will balance itself out. Yeah. So, but as long as you say it high, I remember like in uni, I was like so like my goal was crazy. Like I had this board in my room. And it said, you know, um, too much sleep is for the lazy. And I'd look at it and I'd be like, first class, first class. And I had it like, you know, exclamation marks was great. If I can find a picture of it, I will insert it. Yeah. But it was like a real, it, now I think, when I look back, I was like, why, why was I so like, and what's the word? Dramatic almost with myself. Mm -hmm. But literally I'd look at it and I'd be like, no, don't, don't, don't have a lying, study, study. But usually this was just to sort of remember that this is my goal when I get that first class and stuff. And if I aim, you know, for that first class and my marks would be a bit high and eventually will even out. Yeah, I mean, I, I used to visualize myself getting a first class honors degree. So, the certificate, I didn't even know what it looked like, guys. I didn't even know what it looked like. But I used to, in final year, I used to picture myself being handed that certificate in my graduation ceremony, knowing and believing that I'll graduate with a first class. So, yeah. it also comes up with a mindset as well and believing that you will achieve what it is that you set yeah. yourself to. So, I think that's yeah. a. 
Round That's up. The thing. So yeah, no, I think, I mean, just to add on to what you said, it's like, so whatever way works for best for you, so if you have to have a board in your room that you write on, or if you, if it's just something that you vision in your mind, but whatever way, just, just have it there, and just start to believe, and going back to the first thing that we said, you know, doesn't forget about your GCSE results, forget about your college results, start, like, I mean, yeah. in a sense of, like, think of it fresh, like, yeah. believe in yourself again, and believe that, you know, you can do it again, if you, yeah, you know, apply some of the tips that we said, and obviously, whatever more tips yeah. that other people have as well, and do yourself have you know just do what works best for you as we said again but literally just re-believe reassess set that goal and just go for it you can yeah. do it all right cool so all the best with everyone going to university and mm -hmm. anyone that is in university at the moment all the best and keep believing in yourself keep working smart and you can do it yeah and also if there's anybody out there that has extra tips that you think we've missed out or maybe want to extend any of the ones that we've talked about yeah. feel free to comment below so that we can all learn from each other but so yeah thanks, thanks for, for watching, watching guys, guys. Um, and see you next time yeah